Hello everybody, Nick here at Skog and Nicky. It is a hot morning, but we got a real, real special treat for you guys today. Now, when people call us, sometimes they wonder, why don't you use the dining room more often? I'm gonna give you a little quick insight. This dining room is not Nick's personal plaything. Matter of fact, it's not even Skog and Dickie's personal plaything. It's actually the race shops, and it's actually for our customers. Our customers pay to have engines built. Sometimes they pay a little extra to come in here, verify dyno numbers, or to verify the engines nice and healthy before they put it in the race car, hit the track for a season. And as much as I wish this dyno room was my personal play thing, I'm sure a lot of you guys would too, I actually respect that same decision. The customer comes first. So getting in here is actually a really, really hard thing to do. But at the last second, Alan, our boss, told us, hey, we got some guys that are gonna be out of a race. If you want to dyno something, you have a few days to pull it off. So some sleepless nights, some new battle scars I get to show off to my friends and family, and a lot of late sleepless nights, and I'm now using coffee as medicine to stay awake, but adrenaline is keeping me awake today. I'm, we're really excited. We got something real special to show you. Take a look at this. This is that little 4.3 liter V6 we've been talking about in, the, in past couple videos. You've seen us do uh, we were the first to do DOD delete kits for these. We were the first to do off the shelf cams for these, some performance upgrade cams. But getting in here to get this thing dynoed has actually turned into, honestly, kind of a nightmare. Getting the fueling figured out for this. You can see there's a different intake manifold on it. We'll talk about that here in a minute. Uh, getting tuning set up, finding out different things that fit and don't fit these engines has actually been a real, real challenge. But we finally were able to get in here, like I said, some sleepless nights. But let me go over real quick what these are for those of you who have not been following along in some of our previous videos. If you haven't, you need to subscribe. We would like to do cool stuff like this, so please give us a subscribe and you can see when we post up cool stuff like this. This is the base model V6 that comes in like 2014 to 2021 Silverados. They just quit using it, but they're still using it in the Express vans. They're using it 2018 to I think 2025 or six is when they plan to quit using them in the vans. These are everywhere. These are a 4.3 liter V6, just like the old one, but that is where it changes. This has aluminum block, aluminum heads. You saw us flow the heads in the, in the uh, uh, engine building room. They flow the same as the 5.3 LT engine, and that's what this is based on, is the LT engine. So you get steel crane, steel rods, high silicon alloy pistons that can handle, from what we've seen, a lot of power. Coal unplug ignition. There's a lot of great things about this engine. We started seeing customers starting to mess with these, so we did too. Actually, a guy by the name of Dan Jost for Jost Performance actually took his Grand National, hurt the original engine, looked into rebuilding it, found out it was too expensive and said, eh, screw it. I'm just gonna go to the junkyard, grab one of these. If it lives, if it doesn't, whatever. Found out that these things actually are real tough, handle a lot of power. He's making roughly 600 wheel horse on one of these, the bottom end has not been touched on a big turbo and that's it. And he is running cars that are making much more power than him because this thing is light. 315 pounds dressed is what one of our friends on Facebook in a group that we follow that actually do a lot of cool uh, stuff with these. That's what they weighed. That's a hundred pounds less than the all aluminum LS1. So which is surprisingly also about a hundred pounds less than the old iron V6 this thing replaced. That's 200 pounds less than an Iron 5.3. These things are making good power too, which you're about to see. So this is a low mileage junkyard engine, 29,000 miles. It was an LV3, so we did do a DOD delete on it. It's got a stock cam. I got Kurt here tuning it. Let's see what this thing makes for a baseline. So we just got our first dyno pull finished. Now I have made some guesses here. If you've noticed, I have stock, which is the cam we just ran, 
our little stage one cam, which is the cam we're about to swap in and run. I brought a different shirt so I can stay nice and clean for you guys on camera. And then our stage two cam. I've made some guesses based on the power. Again, we haven't really been able to dyno this stuff and a lot of other people haven't either. So a lot of this was guesswork. We had to really do a lot of research to figure this out. So my guesses were stock, 315 horse, stage one cam, 340 horse, nice little bump for you truck guys. And then stage two was gonna be you guys that really wanted some extra power out of it. I'm thinking it's gonna make 375. And what did it make? It made 318, which is actually pretty good. It made 318 and 351 pound-feet of torque, which is really great out of something that's got a smooth idle, it can tow, all that sort of stuff. So, let's put a bigger cam in, see what it'll do. But, once a little bit comes out, huh. isn't that great? Nice. Makes it so easy. All right. Also, this fuel connector being right over this fuel connector, when I was undo, when I had to undo those rock arms, it sucks. Yeah. You're like, that thing. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. So, we have put in the stage one cam. Real quick, I didn't give you the specs in the last one. The stock cam is 193 degrees of intake duration at 50 thousandths and 199 degrees. Of course, this is emissions, pump gas, they want it to tow, they, it's a base model engine. They weren't expecting us to do what we're doing here. So, the stage one cam that we're running is 204 on the intake and 211 on the exhaust. Not a big bump, a little extra lift to take advantage of some of that flow that we measured not too long ago in another video. Really what I was predicting in my head was a lot of truck people were gonna be messing with these. You bought a base model truck, that's a, they're a really good price, it was several thousand cheaper to get the V6 instead of the V8. A lot of people opted for it, but you want something more out of it. So that's actually what I expect these cams out for. Turns out actually about 90% of our customers are doing everything but doing building trucks with these. We have old Volvos, DeLoreans, Porsches, and all sorts of off-road vehicles and track rats, drift vehicles, autocross monsters that are actually running this engine. So this has actually turned out to be a really great platform, but this stage one cam actually is going to be the key. If you have a truck, you wanna run a stock converter, you still wanna tow and make good torque, but you just want that extra pick me up in power. What did I guess? I guess 340 horsepower. And what did it make? Well, uh, Nick's proven to be pretty good at this. I hate to brag, but it made 343 horsepower and 358 pound-feet of torque. It picked up a little bit of peak torque. What you need to know is the stock cam made 300 pound-feet of torque from about 2,000 RPM to 5,500 RPM. It makes torque everywhere. It should, it has really high compression. This one did the same thing. It picked up seven pound-feet of torque, but still made over 300 pound-feet of torque from 2000 RPM to 5500 RPM. And this, nice smooth idle, great drivability. You can use that torque to haul a dirt bike or two, you know, a small trailer or something. You can still use this truck and pick up 25 horsepower I'm seeing there. That's pretty big. So. The next cam, let's see what it makes.
All right, so we just finished the stage two cam and now this thing is really starting to talk to us. You can hear it in the idle clips. This thing is starting to get a really cool sounding little chop to it. This little buzz and half dozen is now screaming to 6,500 RPM. So it really likes to scream. It's now starting to get attention of some of our coworkers around here wondering what in the world we're running back here. Now the power it made was 360 horse, 365 pound feet of torque and while that is lower than my guess of 375, it actually is still pretty impressive because the bottom end did not lose as much as I thought. We are running an LS3 based intake on it. I'm gonna cover that here in just a second on why. We thought that with a shorter runner design, big plenum, big throttle body, it might kind of kill the bottom end. It actually really didn't kill it as much as we thought. So this is actually a very impressive gain. Something like this, you still would probably wanna run it in a semi-lightweight vehicle, single cab Silverado, or more than likely, like most of you, you're swapping this into something, which is really cool. But you still wanna run 2,500 minimum, maybe even a 3,000 stall would actually do way better. But what we gained here was, we did a little gain chart over here, 25 horse and seven pound feet of torque with the stage one. This is, this is gonna be your sleeper cam. If you're wanting to still tow, still haul, still drive every day, don't change your converter, just DOD delete with a cam swap and a tune. This stage one is gonna be your little sleeper cam, beat up on a couple V8s, embarrass a couple of your 5.3 buddies. But this stage two, if you're wanting to get rowdy, if you're wanting to swap it, this is the one because we picked up 42 horse over stock and 14 pound feet of torque. That is still some pretty good gains out of a six cylinder 4.3 liter engine, but we're not done. We got another idea. But before I talk about that idea, let's kind of go over why we chose to dyno it the way we dynoed it, and maybe you'll have noticed why we got some weird parts on this thing. So I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the setup here, what we've changed, what we haven't changed, and maybe why you're seeing some weird parts on this. Now, when at the beginning of this video, I talked about how getting on the dyno was actually kind of a challenge because this is actually for our customers, not for me to play with like a toy, for good reason. Um, the problem with a new platform is it's hard to find the parts you need sometimes to do things like this. Two, when your manager comes to you at the very last minute and tell you, tells you that you have less than a week to get this thing ready, dynoed, and back off, we have to be off the dyno in four or five hours for another customer's big block to come in here and make way more power than this thing's making. Well, you kind of have to improvise. So. We could not do the direct injection. We could not get anybody here to tune at the factory computer and control this in time. I know that a lot of people wanted to see what this thing would make DI, but that's okay. We've actually had a lot of questions about going port on DI engines. And so far the data we've seen, it's been running great. So we know that kind of theory proven, you can do port on a DI engine. It actually runs really well. What I decided to do was take an LS3 intake, brand new off the shelf. My boss is not happy about me taking that out of inventory. Uh, I used ICT billet adapter plates and blocked off the back ports. That way, we're only running the six injectors, not the back ones at all. Now, of course, that's an overkill for throttle body and plenum volume, but for the power we're making, I actually don't think this helped or even hurt that much, especially considering I've seen other people's dyno information it's about right in the ballpark, so it's not that big of a difference. But you've probably noticed the headers on this thing are made for a V8. Again, we have the stock exhaust manifolds, we could have ran those, but everybody wants to see what headers do, and so did we. We had these super nice Cooks dyno headers for an LT. But if I took a sawzall and a welder to these things, I'd be having to look for another job. This face can only do so much. <laughs> and it can't save my employment if I'm hacking up $1,200 dyno headers. So we had to run them. They bolt up actually, and I had to make plates to cover up the ports that aren't being used. Again, sometimes you have to run with what you've dealt with. We do have some headers that are actually made for a car for one of these V6 engines. They won't fit the dyno though. There's a lot of stuff in the way. And a car header, well, it's trying to tuck up to clear a bunch of other things. So we couldn't get that adapted in time either. So that's why you're kind of seeing some weird parts on this engine. To cover real quick though, we're not running any tricks here. We know a lot of people like the dyno stuff. They're trying to put big numbers up. They want to brag, they want to do stuff. We're not, we're wanting to be honest, have some integrity. We're wanting to show you real world results. So yes, this thing does make 318 and 351. That is a little bit overstock because we are on an engine dyno. There's no accessory drive. We even have an electric Mazir water pump here that we love using those on the dyno, they work great. 
We're of course running headers and a free flowing intake. So it's gonna make a little bit more than stock. The big thing is we wanted to see the jumps in between the camshafts. So when we change camshafts in these, we're not pulling any tricks. It is a camshaft, it is a push rod, it is a valve spring change, that is it. We are still running the stock spark plugs, spark plug wires. We're running stock synthetic 5W30 in this thing. And we're not running any weird tricks where we're turning the oil pressure way down through some magic and running less oil to, you know, sometimes you can kind of decrease windage and pick up a couple extra there. No tricks, consistent real world results. So you guys can actually see when you buy a cam, what you can kind of expect to get out of an engine dyno situation. But I think it's time for these weird V8 headers that I've mangled together to come off. I think it might be time to see what this thing does with some boost. I think Dane agrees. Let's do it. So everything held together, seven PSI boost. How much did it make? It made 510 horse and 300, hold on, let me see, 348 pound feet of torque. I had to look at a graph I got over here. Sorry, 548. Now, I was making a guess here. I was thinking seven PSI, that's roughly half a bar. What do you do? You multiply the 360 by 1.5, you're gonna get well, about 540. We came up a little bit short, so I'll be honest. I actually did guess a little high on that, like I did high with the cam, but that's okay. I don't want to stop here, though. I want to keep going, and Dane wants to keep going, too. We want to see how much this can hold up. So what's the next step? 14 PSI. Let's double this and see how much a bone stock 4.3 can handle. But before we do, Step over here with me. I'm going to explain what we did and did not modify in this engine to do this and what kind of turbo we're running. All right, so now you kind of see the setup that we hodgepodge together. I'm not meaning that to be disparaging towards our race shop guys. Our race shop guys have actually been really helpful with all this as much as they can. Like I said, a few of them are out at a race. That's why we've been able to do this, but they're still busy. They have jobs where they're actually doing stuff for customers. They're just letting me do the most I can while I can. So, uh, most of the cold side here has actually been borrowed from our buddy Kurt that's been doing the tuning for us. Big shout out to Kurt. Not only is he a genius, but he has been super helpful in walking by and telling us, yes or no, that will or won't work, or yes or no, that won't kill you, or that won't blow up the motor. So once again, big thank you to him. He actually is the one that lent us this turbo and all these parts. Um, I welded up the hot side. If you zoom in and see the welds on this, uh, feel free to make fun of me in the comments. I don't care. I am not a professional welder at all. I do like go-karts and truck hot rod exhaust and stuff. You know, the same stuff y'all do. It's just a wire feed 110 outlet welder. And I came up here and I welded it all in one evening. And believe me, the, the rest of this is race shop quality stuff. The hot side, the lower part of it is, is pretty bad, but it's okay. It held together just fine. Um, the turbo here is actually kind of an odd unit. It's a bit of an old prototype unit mixed with Garrett and Precision parts. Essentially what we've been able to measure and find out is it's a GT6152E. You can actually Google that and find specs. Close enough, it is about a 6262. It has a T4 uh, on the hot side, 85 AR. The cold side is a little small though, but at E was the compressor housing and it's pretty small. You got a three inch inlet, a two inch outlet. This was made for a towing boost application in something like a, a, a 4.8 pickup or smaller even. And that's why we think it was gonna work out best for this. So far it is proving to work out great. This thing still makes monster torque. With that torque is made on an engine though, you need to know what we did and did not change. We are still running that 5W30 synthetic oil. Haven't even taken a look. It could be burnt, it could be messed up, it doesn't matter. We, we're we just ro rolling with the punches tonight. We're on limited time here. We're even wasting time kind of filming these. We really need to, it's getting late. We kind of need to get going, but y'all need to know what we did and did not do. It is still the stock bottom end and we do mean that. This is a junkyard pullout, like I said earlier, stock ring gap. 
stock bearings and bearing tolerances. I didn't pull any tricks, anything. I just did this at my shop and brought it right back up to work after a DOD delete. Stock head bolts and head gaskets, not running any tricks there either. So it is just a stage two cam. With the upgraded push rods, you kind of change push rods. You know, like I've always told you guys, we do videos, tech videos, where you measure push rod length. These needed a slightly different length. So put a nice manly one piece push rod in there. Put LT1 factory valve springs, that's what these cams run on, and a camshaft and seven PSI boost. And it fired off without a problem. We are super thrilled. Um, Dane over here, I know is super excited to see what 14 PSI will do. Also, we changed the spark plugs. Those AC Delco plugs actually probably have worked mostly okay on a seven PSI application, but you wanna go colder. We remember we did a spark plug video talking about heat ranges. So we decided to go colder on this. We already knew we were gonna go higher on PSI. Of course, you guys knew that. Um, we wanna turn this up almost till it blows up. <laughs> and uh, so we went with Brisk. They make a great plug for the boosted guys in a stock heat range down multiple steps colder. We did two steps colder with their spark plugs and so far it's working really great. We are going to definitely check in on the 14 PSI run, but other than the few things I've talked about, that's the only, only modifications we've done. If you're wondering how we're going to adjust the boost on something like this, well, I finally got a chance to test out one of GFB's products. That's Go Fast Bits. We did a video on them. They're from Australia, make really, really high quality stuff. They make stuff for like the Toyota 2JZ, the Nissan like RB26 old GTR Godzilla motors. These guys make stuff that can take abuse. Unfortunately, I could not get one of their wastegates, could not get one of their blow off valves, but we had on the shelf a manual boost controller, this little honeycomb thing right here. With an Allen key, so many turns out adds so many pounds of boost. So I'm gonna start turning this thing out. We're gonna start doing some test hits. Let's see what 14 PSI will do and hopefully we don't splatter pistons and rods all over the wall. Let's hit it. So we finally really put all we had in it and cranked it up to 14 PSI. I will be honest, it wasn't 14, it was 14.5. Gotta be honest, gotta give you guys the real data here. Now I will tell you when Kurt does a dyno pull for us on this, he actually does monitor quite a few things. He monitors coolant temp, exhaust temp, and oil temperature. All these things can change the output of an engine on an engine dyno. If you want true back-to-back -back comparisons of all these changes, the lower the variables, the lower we have problems getting you guys the right data. It, it really does matter. And he actually was able to prove that to us by showing us different pools and different temperatures. You really can mess with some of this stuff here. Real quick, for instance, our stage two cam, actually the highest it really made was 362, 367. That was only two horsepower, two pound feet. The reason we're not counting it, coolant temp was lower, oil temp was higher. So. It's nice and thin oil. That actually does kind of help a bit, a little bit of cooler coolant temps. That's not honest. It isn't a comparison that we did with these. This is the real honest back-to-back -back number. We want to make sure to give you guys that data. Now, I actually have the uh, numbers here over stock. So the cam plus seven PSI boost, I didn't put it up the last time. Sorry about that. It actually did an extra 192 <laughs> horsepower over stock and 197 pound-feet of torque on only seven PSI. What a monster. Um, so we did 14 and a half PSI and what did it do? 644 horsepower, 730 pound feet of torque. This thing will not stop making torque, which is kind of what that turbo was actually spec for. It was a small displacement engine for towing. So it, we're actually not surprised it's making that power. We really think I'm, I really, I'm kind of thinking it's it's running out of the compressor side. It's not flowing enough. You can tell it's kind of starting to fall off PSI towards the end, which means it's not flowing enough to make that PSI. But that is an extra 326 horsepower and 379 pound feet over stock. 14 PSI, stage two cam, spark plugs, foul springs, push rods, 
and of course race gas. You gotta make it live. You get the extra horsepower and torque of essentially a stock 5.3 LS engine. What would you guys put this in? We're pretty excited to see where these things are gonna go. I would really like to see what would happen if somebody took one of these and maybe did a big bore, high compression 85 NA build. Maybe take it and do a big bore, but low compression, high boost build. We wanna see if that number can go up. We really appreciate, appreciate you guys stopping by for another one of our tech videos here. This one was real special. This one came up at the last minute. We did a lot of work here. Dane actually did a lot of work and helped me. Uh, of course, the race shop guys helped me. Um, and I can't thank everybody enough. I'm super excited about this and I'm super excited to see where it goes. So we will see you guys next week for another tech video. Make sure to give us a like, subscribe, share if you like seeing more stuff like this. We'll see you next time. Thanks for stopping by. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Ooh, that engine's still hot. God dang. All right. <laughs>